Okay, so this should be following me. Um, using a Insta360 um, Flow, which is the auto tracking gimbal with the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone, so remote microphone. Um, all I'm doing right now is I need to get the bike cleaned up a little bit before I go for a ride. And I figured we would actually talk about this bike a little bit. So this is the 2023 Hayabusa. And I haven't uh, said anything about it. I haven't talked about it a whole lot other than, hey, I'm riding it. Here's a little bit of the details about it, but not a whole lot. Um, so I figured we'd get into why this bike exists. What What's the deal with this bike? And that... Um, is, I don't know, a little bit of a conversation. But <clears throat> uh, first off, we're, we're gonna sit here and wash it. We're gonna use uh, Motul's wash and wax spray, uh, dry cleaner and protective wax. Uh, it's just starting to get nice out. It's not quite 70 yet right this moment, but it's gonna be about 70 today. And so we get a lot of uh, bugs and things like that right now. It's kind of the hatching season, I guess. But anyway, so, um, a little bit of background on the bike situation is that uh, for the last several years, every year, um, I wind up with at least one new bike. And last year's bike was the Kawasaki ZH2. And so this year, it is the 2023 Hayabusa. But that was not necessarily supposed to be the plan. Uh, last year's bike with the ZH2 was supposed to be the bike that I was just going to keep for a while. And I thought it was going to be exciting, I thought it was going to be interesting, but I, I think that warrants its own separate sort of follow-up video as to why that didn't work out the way that it was originally, in my mind's eye, uh, how it was originally. I'm going to wait for the wind to stop blowing so I can spray this. But anyway, how in my mind's eye that was supposed to work out, it just didn't. And so I wound up back at my dealership of choice, uh, which is Motorsport Hillsboro, um, in Hillsboro, here in Hillsboro, Oregon. And, um, we, uh, I, I talked to him and I was just like, I, I made the joke. I was like, Hey, so the ZH2 isn't what I thought it was going to be. It's not, um, it's, it's just, it, it's an excellent bike. It just wasn't doing what I, in my mind's eye thought it was going to be doing for me. And it didn't. And so um, I told them, I was just like, well, I need something else. And I said, the joke was, I, I need something uh, exciting or interesting, or I'm going to need contact info for a cocaine dealer. And uh, I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. I've never, uh, I've never even tried a cigarette. So, you know, don't do drugs. But... Um, Anyway, yeah, so that was, that was the joke that I made, and they asked, they're like, well, have you tried a Hayabusa? And I told them, I was like, yeah, I mean, uh, but like a Gen 1, uh, I don't even think I touched the Gen 2, Gen 1 Hayabusa, yeah, but uh, I, was like, that, I don't think that's me uh, in any sense of the word, um, so yeah, I don't think that's the answer at all. And uh, they're like, well, a lot's changed. And I was like, you know, I, I know I saw the press material on, on, you know, the new Hayabusa was coming out and 500 and some odd parts were different. And so I figured, okay, uh, <laughs> let's do a Hayabusa. Uh, and so I, I actually went home. They didn't have a Hayabusa. So I went home and I thought about it and I did a ton of research. I went to Reddit and I was just like, hey guys, I buy a new bike every year. Uh, <laughs> you know, what should I do next? And I'm very familiar with uh, the motorcycle, the, the street motorcycle space, you know, the everything that's coming, coming and going in that space. And so um, I wasn't, you know, I didn't need an education on the motorcycles, but I was just like, what are, what are people excited about right now? And I threw some of the top bikes that I personally would be excited about. And um, gosh, I'm trying to think of an example, like, where that would be, what was that? Um, it reminds me of that movie, uh, the Too Fast and Too Furious, the second, <clears throat> actually I think that, that was the third movie, I'm not sure, no, I guess Tokyo Drift was the third movie. Anyway, Too Fast, Too Furious. So uh, Brian O'Connor or, or Paul Walker is in uh, 
Miami and he's working undercover with the Miami Police Department. And uh, he's, I think that's the right one. I might not even have the right movie. Uh, in fact, I don't have the right movie. I take it back. It wasn't that movie. But they, uh, he, he's still, it was a Fast and the Furious movie. And he's standing there and he's picking out police cars, uh, or not police cars, but he's picking out cars uh, that have been impounded by the police. And uh, he's talking to the, the person who's going through the inventory with him. And he's like, uh, that one and that one and that one. And, and essentially, they're just cars that he's excited about. And he was actually able to nail down um, somebody they were going to use as an in to get into one of the races or whatever. And they just needed somebody connected. And they're like, well, how did you know it was that guy? And he's like, well, that's a car that I would drive. And um, that's kind of just what this reminded me of, is that when I was looking at my selection that I sent over to Reddit... Uh, I know that was a whole rant about something that didn't make sense, didn't seem like there was a connection or segue. But anyway, when I sent it over to Reddit, uh, it was just a list of bikes that I would be excited to ride. Uh, because there's lots of stuff that's out there that's cool, that's neat, that's whatever. Um, and, I, and I can look at, you know, I can go to a bike meet and, you know, appreciate. But it's not for me. It's not something I'm personally going to be excited about uh, in my own garage space, on my own ride. Uh, and, and that's what the list was that I sent over to Reddit. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, the Reddit vote was actually kind of interesting. There was a, there was a lot of commentary that wasn't relevant or uh, constructive to the conversation at all. But um, there, was, there was a voice that kind of, it didn't get the majority vote. And, um, but it, it had the most compelling conversation like the the written dialogue if you will to the vote and so I I thought about that and I was like okay um I think it, so the it was the Kawasaki uh, H2 and the uh Panigale V4 that uh tied for top pick and then I want to say it was the s 1000 R and the Hayabusa that also tied for second pick. And, but the, the conversation, the, the meaningful input to the vote itself, the, the written dialogue, was most backed and supported by the Suzuki Hayabusa. And to be honest, I was looking at the Hayabusa first anyway. But again, my dealer of choice didn't have one. So um, I, at this point now, I've had the conversation with the dealership. I've done some research and, and homework on what the Hayabusa has changed uh, from the last time that I had ridden one. And uh, I went to the internet and the internet was like, hey, you know, here's a reasonable uh, thought conversation regarding this specific bike, regarding the Hayabusa. And... Uh, so instead of, you know, just popping over directly to a biased field of Hayabusa people going, hey, should I get a Hayabusa? Um, they're either going to tell you yes, or they're going to tell you no, or they're going to tell you, hey, it's, it's the best starting bike, like starter bike that you can get. So anyway, um, ugh, I, have, I haven't gotten that rear front fender in a long time or ever. But yeah, so at that point, I'm now committed uh, in my mind. I am committed to a Hayabusa. And so um, the dealership actually calls me. They go, hey, listen, we have another dealer that we work with uh, down south, and they have a Suzuki Hayabusa. And I thought it was actually a 22, but they're like, hey, we have a Suzuki Hayabusa. And are you sure for sure that you want this one of these things? Um, because we can go get it from them. We'll do a dealer trade. And uh, that's fine, but you have to be sure because, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to take in a couple of quads that we don't really want. We have to take those into inventory uh, that we really don't want them. They just don't sell very well here. Um, but that's the deal. If we want the Hayabusa, we also have to buy these from them also. Do you, are you sure you want the Hayabusa? And I said, yes, I am sure I want the Hayabusa. Thanks for whatever, you know, make the deal. Uh, I'll take the Hayabusa. And so, uh, cool. D 
deal's done, I guess. You know, they're, they're gonna do whatever it is that they do to have that conversation for the dealer trade. And at some point there will be a Hayabusa in my local area. And so there were other dealerships that had Hayabusas. It's just that I'm, I'm fairly loyal uh, to that dealership. And I wasn't in a rush. This was the middle of, like this was just before, I wanna say it was just before Thanksgiving that we were having this conversation. And so, um, yeah, they, they go and they do the deal and I'm not super worried about going to another dealership because the riding season's over here in the Pacific Northwest anyway. It's Heidi. And um, yeah, super not, not in a rush, whatever. <clears throat> I'll work with them. They, they get the thing whenever they're gonna get it. And uh, then I'll have a Hayabusa, I guess. Well, uh, a few days go by and I was curious. So I reached out and I just said, Hey, uh, out of curiosity, like what kind of time frame are we looking at? And, and something to bear in mind is that I still have the ZH2. The way that my traditional behavior works is that I get the new bike. I sell the prior year bike, uh, back to them and they make lots of money off of me doing that. And, um, that's just the relationship and that I'm okay with it. So anyway, um, they're like, well, it's, it's probably going to be a couple of weeks. And so now bear in mind, this is like, I don't know, three days after they checked with me and they said, Hey, are you sure? And, um, and so three days later I reach out and I say, Hey, rough ETA. Uh, they say it's probably going to be a few weeks. Okay. Not a problem. Well, anyway, <clears throat> my guy at the place reaches out back out to me later that day, um, near the end of the business day. And he's like, Hey, uh, just kidding, your bike showed up on a truck today, it's here. So three days after I said, hey, um, you know, rough ETA, and they told me a couple of weeks, uh, or I'm sorry, I reached out and said, hey, um, when do you think? And they said a couple of weeks, it was, you know, it was there. So showed up and um, that's cool, I guess. Uh, like four days after we uh, confirmed the deal, yes, I for sure want it, this, this bike is here. So anyway, cool. The bike's, the bike's there. Uh, and, but it's near the end of the business day. We're not going to be able to get through, uh, you know, all the paperwork and everything and getting the bike over to me at that point. So, uh, he actually, my guy reaches out and he's like, Hey, uh, about a half an hour later. So he sends me pictures actually, when it shows up on the truck, he's like, Hey, your bike's here with pictures. And, uh, about a half an hour later, he messages me. He's like, Hey, don't, come down the bike isn't going to be ready turns out there is freight damage and so uh i asked and i was like well how bad you know how bad is the freight damage and he sends me pictures and it's not great the uh the right fairing has a uh hole in it essentially and then the, it, the right side is where all the damage is. The exhaust shield is bent and scuffed up and uh, the peg is broken, the rider peg is broken. And so it's not good, but, um, and they're not really sure what the plan is for that, for addressing that. And so they, uh, he's like, yeah, don't come down. So then he messages me later and he's like, hey, uh, so we're gonna have Suzuki deal with it. Uh, they're gonna just go ahead and replace everything. Uh, is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Um, first party, you know, fix that's, that's fine with me. And again, it's like October or something. Um, November, maybe even, I think it was near Thanksgiving, Halloween, something like that. And, um, yeah, so, uh, yes, I'm fine with that. The, it's going to be a little while before, uh, parts arrive. And uh, once that's all said and done, they'll, they'll do the repair and then we'll go through the paperwork and then I'll have the Hayabusa, not a problem. Again, because the, the time of year, super, super not worried about it. So anyway, uh, he asked me, he's like, hey, do you want the bike now? Like we're gonna definitely get these parts and everything, but do you want the bike now? Because normally <clears throat> I'm very, American in regards to the instant gratification. I just want like my stuff is there and I want to go pick it up and I'm excited about it. And we're all that way. You know, we're excited about it and we want to ride it right now. We want to play with our new toys right now. 
And so this was not an exception. And I was like, well, yeah, actually, if that's possible, yeah, I would, I would love to uh, come take a look at it. Like, it's, there's nothing mechanically wrong with it. I can ride this bike. And um, he's like, yeah. So <clears throat> I uh, head down there the next day. I said, when we had this conversation, uh, the day that it arrived, it was near end of business day. It wasn't going to work out that day and go down there and we do the paperwork and get it all squared away. It's my bike. And here's what was interesting. I took the ZH2 over there and the number that they gave me for the ZH2 was so low that despite the fact that I know that they make money off of this, like a decent chunk of money off of this every single time, uh, I was not comfortable with, um, Hey, look at me. Is it going to? No. Oh, that's what I was saying when the, the video got all wompity was that uh, the number was so low uh, regarding the trade-in that I said, hey, um, I am absolutely not okay with that number. Uh, we weren't able to come to an agreement in the number, which is fine. Um, and so I wound up going home with my ZH2. Uh, no, I didn't, actually. I'm sorry. I put it on the showroom floor and said, hey, we'll just put it there for... Um, I can't remember what that word is. Commissary is not the word. Um, anyway, uh, consignment. Yeah, put it on consignment. And so if someone comes along to buy the bike, great. Uh, if not, that's okay too, and I'll just go home with it eventually. So uh, I go home on the Hayabusa, and uh, several weeks go by, a few weeks go by, and they reach out, and they're like, hey, the parts are here, so head back to the dealership, uh, and they, I actually ordered at the time when the bike arrived, I ordered some Suzuki stuff, it comes with the rear seat and the grab bar, but I ordered the match cow and I got the factory heated grip. So all of that stuff had arrived at the same time. Great. So, um, they do, they do the install, they replace the components and, um, we're good to go. So the H2, the ZH2 rather is still sitting there, um, which is okay. And uh, it continues to sit there. And then I decided to try to ride the Hayabusa through the summer months, which is not really that effective. Uh, despite the heated grips, I even wired up and put, um, uh, I wired in a, uh, like a cable off the battery to go to heated gear, like wired heated gear for the stuff. And, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I was able to get some interesting winter riding days out of it, but it's it's really sketchy on new tires and with ice on the ground and everything. I don't recommend it. But um, I am just now getting into the nice weather here with me all backlit and everything, which is not good. But uh, just now starting to get into the nice weather to see what I think of this bike. Uh, that said, the ZH2 sat for a little bit and I just, I wasn't, I don't know, I missed it or something, and I needed a second bike for something. Um, I, like, we've got the CBR 1000 R right there, but I needed a third bike for something. We got a slingshot. We just needed a bunch of vehicles for something, like a hangout day. And so I brought the thing home, canceled the consignment, and now I have the ZH2 sitting here and the Hayabusa. And yeah, so I guess, I guess that's the plan. That's why the Hayabusa exists. That's the story of getting the Hayabusa. I don't have a whole lot to say about it right now. I think that's its own separate thing uh, to get into because I, I definitely should talk about it once I feel that I've put enough into riding it uh, in the environment that it really should be ridden in, not the winter. And I've got some stuff to say about the ZH2 that's sort of this realization a year later, uh, considerations about it. And I'll get into that. Looks like Heidi's on her way back through. so. We'll go ahead and wrap it up here. We're gonna take off and uh, go get some uh, errands done. And yeah, so that's that's the story of getting the Hayabusa. Uh, stick around for the next one. We'll talk about thoughts and, and opinions on it from like a non-review perspective. All right, take care.